Rick, let's talk about milestone payments. Can you tell me the difference between other transactions, milestone pay payments, and then the FAR performance-based payments? First thing to note, at DARPA, we pioneered milestone payments in other transactions, and, and a few years later, uh, performance-based payments showed up in the FAR. Hmm. Was Interesting. A, a way to finance uh, procurement contracts. The uh, idea behind uh, uh, milestone payments I mean, relates to the basic flexibility of uh, other transactions. Um, in the Federal Acquisition Regulation, you have basically co cost reimbursement contracting and fixed price contracting. Now, there are, there are variations on, on those themes, but it's basically that dichotomy. Milestone, the idea behind milestone payments was that they're not just one thing. They're not just a method of uh, financing the effort. Uh, they are that, and they are also a key management tool uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the project. So there's an additional benefit there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's getting away from this either-or mentality that you end up with in a highly regulated mm -hmm. system. Uh, and they can be, be used in a variety of ways. So the idea is that you can break up the project into uh, segments where you have a defined technical goals and those technical goals are associated with payments and the payment does not necessarily have to be related to the estimated cost mm -hmm. of accomplishing the goal. In, in fact, a related issue, not, not part of your question, but nonetheless a related issue is that in other transactions, advanced payments are authorized. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seldom used advanced payments, uh, but, but we often have what we call soft milestones, that they, on the front end of the project, there is a, an event that occurs uh, for which a payment is made, and the, and the payment may have very little um, connection with the cost of the event, but it provides that uh, finance is it for uh, initial labor for long mm -hmm. lead time items, and that might be a very valuable uh, thing if you have a poorly capitalized company, or perhaps mm -hmm. you're dealing with an academic in institution mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't so have. So it's kind that, of a kickstart. It's it's absolutely a, a kickstart to the to the project. Once you do that, however, you, you want your milestones to be uh, relatively disciplined and not disciplined in the, in the sense that key things actually have to occur. And, and the mindset that you bring to laying out the milestones is, I'm at this point and my project goal is over there and I want to get there. What key points should I get to, to, to go there? So I might use a critical path methodology and make milestone payment, put milestone payments at critical nodes uh, on that critical path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I might take a systems engineering approach uh, and, and say, you know, what accumulation of efforts do I have to uh, have in order to accomplish my goals? And again, associate the milestone payments with those. Mm -hmm. The idea being that if you fail to, if, and, and we call these milestones, we're really talking about defined observable achievements, typically technical achievements, but I'll get to a point where that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, if we fail to accomplish them, uh, and they're typically also associated with a schedule to get to this particular event, mm -hmm. if we fail to accomplish them, that forces us then to ask the question, why didn't we accomplish mm -hmm. that? The answer to that question then relates to a management decision. Mm -hmm. um, the performer was inadequate. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to accomplish this project at all. Uh, we got the milestone wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, uh, an intervening cause that we didn't expect. It, it interfered with uh, performance. I mean, the answer might be varied, but by asking the question, Understanding the answer, we then determine what comes next. Do we just continue? Do we just skip that milestone and continue with the project? Mm -hmm. Do we terminate the project now? Do we realign the project? Rather than in cost reimbursement contracting, where we just keep chugging on, trying to get to the end, and and incurring costs 
right. all the way. We we have adopted a failing is okay. Fail, and if we're going to fail, fail early. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's sort of a different approach and a different philosophy. Now, how does that how is that distinguished from performance based payments under FAR? Uh, first of all, we pioneered milestone payments at DARPA, and a few years later, the FAR incorporated performance-based payments. Typically, OT milestone payments don't look at incurred costs at all. Mm -hmm. the, the, the level of fidelity that you want, the level of uh, discipline that you put into relating estimated costs to milestone depends on the project, uh, depends whether or not there's resource sharing involved, it depends on who the performer is. However, under FAR, you must track incurred costs, mm -hmm. even though you're doing milestone, uh, even though you're doing performance-based payment and you're looking at technical achievements along the way. Uh, and you can't pay more than 90% of the uh, payments without uh, validating that incurred co costs have been uh, incurred. Again, it's, it's a fundamental different, fundamentally different approach. We're, we're looking at price and value rather than cost. Right. And uh, people, you know, some people are so wedded with uh, getting the cost issues right that, that they really miss out trying to understand what's the value to the government of this project succeeding or even the project failing because failure of the project may teach us uh, a great deal. Mm -hmm. And I, I I said these milestones are typically technical milestones, observable technical accomplishments, but not always. And and one of the examples of that is is not a DOD example, but it's actually a NASA example with the commercial uh, orbital transportation system, COTS, or um, which resulted in the development by uh, Space Exploration Corporation of the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. And, and that was laid out with a series of uh, payable milestones, most of which were technical in nature, mm -hmm. but some of which were financial in nature. Mm -hmm. Namely, that in, in addition to government money coming into the project, the company put money into the project, and the company was required also to bring in third-party financing mm -hmm. into the project. And some of the milestones were X amount of third-party money coming in, and a, and a government payment was premised on this, right. uh, this, this uh, third-party money. So, I mean, the fl flexibility uh, on structuring OTs is, is almost limitless. I mean, they can be firm fixed price, they can be cost reimbursement, but uh, uh, payable milestones is just, you know, it, it serves the dual purpose of financing the project as well as a key role in managing the project. And the, the literature on uh, uh, performance-based payments, I mean, performance-based payments in FAR contracting are actually seldom used. Mm -hmm. And the workforce ha has very little uh, background in, in using uh, milestone payments for OTs are, you know, the preferred or the recommended uh, method of structuring uh, the agreement. So they're, they're really fundamentally different. Great. Well, thank you for answering that question. And if you would like to learn more about milestone payments, please visit our website at strategicinstitute.org.